Well, we saw another friend of ours, Joe, from Mule Expedition Outfitters. Hey, how's it going, guys? So, yeah, Joe just built this amazing Land Cruiser, this 80 Series. I'm literally looking around like, oh, oh, oh. So we wanted to see if you could tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, as you could tell me when to shut up because I'm definitely going to give you more information you're probably going to want. But um, why don't we start with the, the engine bay? Oh, yeah, Is pop that, that hood. I know it's usually saved the best for last, but since we're right here, let's get on that. Mm -hmm. I'll pop the hood and we'll go to the front. So we started this project back in April thinking, oh yeah, no problem, we'll, we'll chop an 80 and put an LS in it and, you know, redo everything in six months. And, you know, if I took off my glasses, you'd see, you know, five foot bags underneath my eyes. But, you know, uh, we knew that the 80 needed a little bit of love in the engine bay. Um, this was a 91, so it didn't have the more powerful motor that came in the 94 to 97s. So we decided, what the heck, let's, let's chuck in a Corvette LS3. 500 horsepower should be enough. And uh, so that's what we did. So we basically shoehorned this thing in here and, you know, kind of built the truck around the motor. Mm -hmm. um, basically what we got is a TRD air box, which we happen to have lying around the shop in a box, believe it or not. Um, so we kind of staged everything up, checked the clearances on the hood and made sure everything closed right. And then from there, it was just a matter of sourcing the right components, radiator, headers, uh, exhaust system, um, ECU, so we're rocking the Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 in this unit, um, which is a new product from Edelbrock. Um, basically, that runs all the engine management stuff and uh, allows you to kind of do some custom tunes. Um, putting the power to the wheels is a TCI uh, reverse manual valve body transmission built by TCI. And uh, reverse manual valve body means that uh, you shift it like a manual car, but it's an automatic, so no clutch. Um, kind of dra kind of drag racing stuff or, or you know, King and the Hammers type stuff. Yeah. And uh, when we get inside the cab, I'll show you the shifter. A lot of this stuff was, you know, ideas I've had for years rolling around in my, my skull. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it came time to build the truck, I'm like, well, you know, let's not hold back. Let's just, you know, like, like the Baja Runner, let's, let's kind of go over the top and see what happens. Yeah. So that's kind of what we did. I was just going to say, I, when I saw the Baja Runner for the first time, big Ram on 40s and that big four-wheel camper, I was impressed. And I was like, yeah, what are you going to do after that? And now I'm like, yeah, wow, I'm drooling over this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so part of the reason for doing the chop is that we just started bringing in Mitz Alloy, and Mitz Alloy is a company that makes trays and canopies in Australia, and it's kind of a nod to the Aussies who are, they're cutting trucks up all the time. Yeah, no you know, big deal. Like, no big deal over there. Yeah. You like go to Kmart over there and get your truck chopped in half, I don't know. But, so we got this truck, we cut it in half, and it sat in the shop for about six months because I got busy doing other stuff. And then the wife's like, hey, Expo's coming up. You got a chopped up truck you in the garage. Up truck, you got an engine in a box, are you gonna put it together? So yeah, so we started, you know, fabbing it all up. And uh, again, just a nod to the Aussies, they've, they've been doing this for so long. And I figured how better, what better way to bring this new product line in than on the back of a kind of a radical, you know, something you don't see over in the States very often. Hopefully we'll see more of these. I hope more people chop up their trucks, to be honest. Yeah. Me too. Chopping up your truck's fun. Yeah. I've done it, right? you know? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I'll show you that part too. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, LS3, I uh, did a lot of AN stuff, kind of converting over just for simplicity. Um, stock battery box, some stock piece parts in there, uh, but you know, generally it's 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 an 80 with with an LS and mm -hmm. been done before. Um, we put our, our little finishing touches on it. Oh, you know, mule built. That's neat. So we got you know we got some little bits and pieces in there. A lot of little custom brackets and things like that too. Yeah. Um, but moving on. Yeah, the the Mitz alloy tray yeah. and what's all cut. That that's a very unique feature. The most unique, well, I don't know, the motor swap too, man. You got a lot of unique features on There's this rig. Junk. I mean, we could we could make a probably like a Scorsese epic out of this thing, but you know, Godfather 3 is long enough. We don't need to go there. there you go. Uh, but uh, you know, so we like to stick with some of the more traditional um, piece parts out of the Aussie market. So ARB was kind enough to supply us with this bull bar. And I, I you know, growing up as a kid, ARB, man, like when I was looking at off-road trucks, when I was growing, when I was, there was, there was, we didn't have the market, we didn't have the number of products that we have now, but it's such a classy looking bumper still, so oh, yeah. we decided to rock the ARB, we got the 
come up 9.5 in the front um, with the Factor 55 uh, expert on there. So, you know, just a lot of the stuff that we've kind of grown to love over the years of building trucks, uh, and we kind of put it all in here. Given that, there's some really cool stuff. Uh, you know, of course, you like to stop your truck, right? I do. Uh, you know, one-ton brakes on, on my midsize. I like it. Yeah. yeah. One ton. <laughs> so, so we thought the same thing. You know, we're putting, we're putting 500 horsepower in the engine bay, and we're putting, you know, 700 pounds on the back. You want to be able to, you know, bring the truck to a stop. So we brought in uh, the guys from uh, Power Break out of South Africa, and they tuned us up some really nice two-piece rotors, uh, 350 millimeter, uh, you know, basically I think the stock truck came with 328 millimeter. So big rotors, big six piston calipers. And uh, that, you know, I, I, I can, you know, say from experience that the things will stop your rig. We got them on my fourth gen forerunner and I've never stopped that truck so good. Uh, so you don't fly past, you know, you, you're going by a river and you're like, oh, there's a camp spot, exactly. Burp, yeah. you can go get it. As long as, you know, as long as the guy that's running stock brakes isn't behind you, you're good. I, you want them smushing your I did that the other day to a buddy in a full-size truck behind me, and I'm, I go to stop and he goes flying by, like, that's not going to work, my yeah. perspective's all off. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we got the brakes, we got the, we got the motor, so stop and go is taken care of, and then from that point it was, what comes next, right? You got to have your keep gear it stored. comfy where's yeah. your gear go yeah your gear go. so we installed the mitts alloy tray and canopy setup it's uh somewhat of a custom canopy it's a little bit shorter and a little bit taller than what they offer for like the tacoma or the gladiator or the ranger but um since we were running 37s we kind of wanted the canopy a little higher just to make sure the tires didn't poke up above and um yeah basically got that guy installed and, and, and the guys from Mitts, they, they had done a previous chop for uh, Spares Box out of Australia. If anybody watches that 24-7 show, um, they did a really nice job on that. So we kind of said, hey, we need something like this, but we're not chopping the body or chopping the frame rather, so we want a full size, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, they got us hooked up and had it shipped over here and uh, installed. It looks great. Nice. Well, you want to go swing around the corner, take a, take a peek what you got in there? Yeah, yeah. Let's go yeah, let's check it out for sure. So we're gonna look inside here, and I'll show you guys the the guts of the uh, of the the Mitz alloy canopy and kind of what we've got going and how we've got it configured. But the inside, Ooh. you know, this is pretty typical for a canopy setup like this. You got a drawer system that pulls out. And you can put your dry goods. Oh, what's this? Oh, you that got some Mars swag. Stickers, man, those are sweet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, got to get so, them all hooked up. Got to get you down to mob stickers in there. But you know, you got, as long as you got room, you got a nice prep area here, place to set up a little mini bar, whatever you want to do, you know, uh, depending on what you're doing, whether you're at a show or you're out in the woods just mm -hmm. camping for a couple of days. But it gives you a nice, solid. nice prep area. That's solid. That's some beautiful <laughs> aluminum. I love it. Yeah, so those work great. You got a nice storage tray up here with some strap points so you can you know strap all your gear down got a little arb recovery gear sitting there and then uh clear view in my opinion make the best slides around so we've got the clear view slide in here and dometic 75 quart I it believe. looks like a 75 yeah the 75? cfx the three the 75 so. yeah it's a, it's a dual zone yeah um so this these are all basically connected up to our red vision system which we'll look at on the other side of the canopy. But, um, you know, people are really familiar with the dual zone fridges, I think. Dometic makes a really a really nice dual zone. Plenty of room for all your drinks and, and uh, stuff that needs to be refrigerated. Uh, of course, you can set it up freezer, freezer, fridge, freezer, fridge, fridge. Um, yeah, I loved having the, I had the dual zone for a little while in my truck and it was really hard to make the switch to the smaller one, yeah. but I really wanted to save the space. Yeah. But I love like having the freezer, and that you know you have meats too long, you move them over to the freezer, and yeah. it's well, it, ice. yeah. If, if you got, if you like to have margaritas, you need ice. The margarita's not the same. So anyway, it's pretty much revealed my drinking habits. But uh, <laughs> but you know, be able to make ice on the trail is like a, such a novel thing. You know, it's super cool. Oh, uh, and also the, the Kotex 2000 watt inverter. Um, made a cup of espresso the other day with my espresso machine in here. I know it's a little bit over the top, but you know, to be honest, espresso on the trail, 
hard to beat. It's all about the little things. It's all about the little things. If you can fit it and you're willing to rock it, um, so yeah, that Kotec 2000 watt. I think the, the espresso machine was pulling about 1,350 watts. And that wow. Had no problem just chugging away. So that was my that was my litmus test for the uh, for the old uh, inverter, and it worked great. So that's awesome. Satisfied customer yeah. all the way around. Yeah, and I'm excited to see the Red Arc system. I'm doing the same Red Vision and the Manager 30 in my truck. So it's just. I mean, I can't say enough about Red Arc and their products and how well they integrate together. In fact. Once we make our way into the cab, I'll show you guys real quick the secondary screen. So I've got control of all the electronics from the cab and from the canopy. So that's really a kind of a unique feature. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to, you can still dial in with your Bluetooth on mm -hmm. your phone, but having that standalone unit in the cab just allows you to check things, you know, solar incoming, what's on and what's off, control lighting and stuff from the cab and from the canopy without having to jump on your phone. Yeah, I got to see this because I didn't really know that was an option, and I probably need that too. Yes. yes <laughs> yeah, all this stuff is kind of like we got fire hose because they're just – Red Arc just started introducing all these different products, and the dual monitor thing actually I think just came out in the last six months. You know, they knew it was an option because everything works off CAN bus. So you could actually – you could if you had a big, you know, huge RV, you could have like four or five screens. You just got to program each one and then plug them in the CAN bus mm -hmm. and then away you go. You could be in the other room like, honey, you're using too much power. I know it. No. <laughs> right. You turn the shower off like when she's in mid. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, this kind of sums up the side. But, of course, you got the little storage boxes, which are probably locked. Um, this gives you a little more storage space for recovery gear, dirty sneakers, dog toys, um, you name it. Uh, and the mid's alloy, they do a real nice job putting these extra facets and things. Gives it a nice, tidy look, um, which appeals to me from an aesthetic, you know, the aesthetic standpoint. Um, and then uh, when we get around the back. I'm actually, out of all the parts of the truck, I'm actually really proud of the rear end of the truck, which is kind of strange because most people like, you know, how the front end looks. And like, He's proud of his rear end, okay. The rear end guy, I don't know. Let's, we could go look at that if you want to. I'll look at your rear end. Yeah, let's check it out. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, so we're at the back of the truck. Uh, this is the rear. These are 37-inch uh, Yokohama uh, MTs. Um, I love the Yokohama tires. They've been fantastic. We ran them on the, the Baja Runner. We run them on all our rigs, actually. And uh, when we were actually, this is a funny story. It's not really funny, but I'll give you it anyway. Um, when we were building out the truck, we originally expect other wheels for the truck, you know. But um, we came to find out that the center bores wouldn't clear the, the hubs on, on the 80. And uh, I searched all over the internet looking for uh, a wheel that would clear those hubs. And it was really difficult to find anything. There really isn't any information on like different wheel manufacturers' websites that would say, hey, this wheel would definitely fit an 80. Hmm. It's an older truck, you know, whatever. But one of my sales guys said, hey, if you, if you thought about the Terraflex Nomad wheels, and I'm like, Terraflex makes wheels for Jeeps. They don't make wheels for Toyotas. He's like, nah, nah. He's like, they make wheels for Toyotas. And so I go on the website, and of course, there it is, right in their in, in print. These wheels will fit an 80 series Land Cruiser. And I was like, hallelujah. And we got them shipped in, but super, super pleased with them. I mean, Terraflex does a nice job on all their stuff. The fact they're getting into the Toyota market, like, I don't think anybody really knows. Like, a lot of Toyota guys are like, what? Like, Terraflex, mm -hmm. you know? But the cool thing about them, they got this dump valve. You can basically dump right down to, you know, 15 PSI. And then when you're done there, you can, you can basically just walk away. When you're done with that, you can go to the air up side and basically air up, you know. So when you're when you're down, uh, airing down, you don't have to stand there with a, with a gauge. You know, you can basically just crack all the valves and walk away. And whatever you preset your, your pressure to, um, the tire will be that at that pressure when you get back to kind of type of So you do set these to a pressure? You do. And then? A little Allen key inside. So basically, I wasn't getting it quite. There we go. So basically, when I turn this valve. Yeah, it's like it, it's like it has no valve stem. Right. It's like another valve stem with no core, right? But it'll stop at whatever you've set the pressure to. Now, um, that's neat. My trail ready wheels have a rapid air down thing too, but you just twist it. Yeah. And you, you just wait, like, I, I do about 30 seconds, yeah. but I can't set it. Oh. So that's neat that you can literally twist it, walk away. Yep. When your rig is done, yep. you don't hear any more air, you're done. Exactly. So you can go, you can have, you know, 
like having espresso. You make an espresso and walk around the truck or sit in the truck, and then you come back and everything's down at 15. That's beautiful. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, of course, uh, all the mitts trays have a full-length slide, so so you kind of... So, you know, you could get a lot of storage back here. You got this little stainless steel prep table that comes out. Oh, it's actually aluminum, not stainless. <laughs> but it gives you um, some storage for, like, snowboards or maybe water skis. I don't know. Fishing poles. If you have a small fishing pole. Um, you know, it's sort of long, skinny stuff. So that goes in there. Yeah, and that's just, that would be dead space under the rig. So it's everywhere you can fit storage. Exactly. And that's what's cool about these flatbeds. My truck, I'm building it, you know, integrated wheel well, so I don't have that kind of storage. Yep. And there's just pros and cons. Some people really would need that for fishing or skis or long stuff. Yeah. But, you know, to maximize the storage space, of course, that leads to sometimes overloading. So you got to make sure that your suspension can handle the load. As you know, you're going to be doing a lot of that on, on your Jeep, getting yeah. it ready for the camper. But... Um, so we made we made you know we made sure that the rear springs are like the highest rated old man cool. emu uh, J springs they have eight thousand or eight hundred pound over uh, you know standard stock so so that's really good um, but uh, the other mods that we did that I'm really kind of it was, it was one of the things I've wanted to do for years was uh, build like an integrated skid plate on the rear and wow, uh, wow. yeah so so this this whole uh, concept came about because the original frame just kind of came straight out from the back of the truck. So instead of the back of the, this is not really a bumper, but your recovery point instead of being up here would kind of be down here. So you're losing a lot of your departure angle. Mm -hmm. And given that I didn't, you know, uh, have the have the stock body on there and I, I could raise everything up, I figured why not? So we built this custom rear end and basically cut the frame back about two feet that way fabbed up this uh, sort of grid structure rear end and then uh, and then chucked on this uh, aluminum skid plate. So behind here is a come up 9.5 slimline uh, synthetic winch and uh, of course you got some Baja Design uh, S2 Pros back here for backing up and then your little uh, you know your solar your winch not your winch oh, plug. Oh the winch yeah. Yeah for your controller. Yeah. It's also got the remote so you, know, you can control it here there but I can also reach up and just plug in the controller there if I needed to and then uh, access the uh, the winch clutch from underneath yeah. as well. Wow, this is such a clean rear winch skid setup. And I love, like you said, I love that you're thinking about the departure angle. You, I've seen some flatbeds that the hitch is, you know, down here. Yeah. And that's okay. I mean, yeah. it's it's very strong part to hit on the trail, so it's kind of good protection. Sure. But a skid plate is ideal. Yeah. yeah. And if you, you, can either, you can either build it up and then you know, put some armor on it and use it as a hammer to crush rocks, or you can get it out of the way and, and maybe not hit stuff. So yeah. that's kind of we took that approach. Yeah, yeah the idea of not hitting stuff's good, yeah. but if you do, it's ready. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, what else back here? Yeah, I got the stock uh, lights that come with all the mitts alloy canopies. They got these really nice integrated LEDs, which work super. Um, mud flaps and guards. Uh, do you guys want to check out the electronics uh, sure, package yeah. inside? We probably should check out that Red Arc system. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty groovy. Yeah, let's check that out. All right, so so we're at the uh, driver's side, and on this side is where we got some more storage, but this is where all the magic happens, I guess. Um, we got a 200 amp hour Blue Oasis lithium battery, um, and that's all being managed by the Red Arc Manager 30, which is connected to the Red Vision system. Uh, for anybody who's not familiar with Red Vision or, or Red Art for that matter, uh, the Red Vision system works to, it's like the central brain. It's like the brain of the electronic system. So it manages all of the uh, input and output, basically uh, control of all your lighting, pumps, uh, any, any ancillary things you might be running off of the vehicle uh, is controlled through that, through this little screen right here. And um, in addition to doing the... Uh, having all these you know, control points, 10 different circuits basically, you can turn things on and off. Uh, it's got the ability to manage uh, six water tanks or give you, give you the levels of six water tanks. Of course, on this truck, we only have one, but on a bigger like RV or a bigger expedition rig, you might have you know, gray water, black water, fresh water, or maybe two fresh water tanks. So given that uh, it's got all that extra expandability, you can really use it on multiple, multiple platforms at different sizes and, and stuff like that. Um, 
So that works really well. It's tied into a 120 watt panel on the roof and 232 panels, 232 watt panels on each of the canopy doors. And uh, that essentially is more than enough for this rig for like keeping your fridge cold. We don't have a lot of other ancillary stuff. We will add a water pump at some point, maybe a hot water shower. But uh, right now, the primary load on this is the fridge. So, you know, if you want to go out for an extended period of time, I mean, with sun like this and Flagstaff, gosh, you could be out here for weeks before you need to get this thing either driving on the road and charging off the alternator or plugged into shore power. Mm -hmm. So this does actually have a shore power plug, which is on the other side too. Mm -hmm. um, other stuff too, obviously the, the tray and canopy come apart. So if you want just to rock this as a flatbed truck, maybe you want to go to the dunes and just blast around with all this extra weight kind of off the rig. We made sure that uh, on the side here, we added uh, all the quick disconnect stuff. So this box right here basically allows you to disconnect the uh, communications cable between the cab and the Red Vision system in the canopy, and also the power and all of the uh, extra uh, digital inputs and outputs that are coming off the Red Vision system that go into the cab. So easy to disconnect, take out four bolts, get your, get your lifting uh, points set up, and then you can basically lift the canopy off, drive out, go do some jumps, I mean, whatever you want to there do. you go i like it jump. yeah i'm down to mob <laughs> yeah, exactly we're down to mob too so so yeah you stuff like little rods go in there yeah, and i've never yeah. seen one of these go on and off that's kind of yeah, cool I, I wish we could do it we didn't bring them down with us here but yeah essentially it's like two uh, aluminum rods on a little pedestal and then rv rv jacks yep. and we use them at the shop yep. sometimes with the lift so if you have a four post lift handy you can also just lift it off with oh, the four yeah. posts, which is nice yeah that's nice. but uh but that works super well yeah, this, you got the Pangolin tool roll. We were just talking to Adam at Step 22. Yeah, Step 22, we love their gear. They make some solid stuff. I've actually got two of these. And I got one for electrical stuff, one for my, you know, bigger wrenches and everything. Um, the other cool point about the, the MITS canopies is all the track system. So everywhere you see this track, you can, you can put in hard points, you can attach additional shelving, you can reorganize everything. So that fridge slide and all the stuff in the, the drawers on the opposite side all unbolt. So if you wanted to just flip, flip it around, it around or take like, I it, want out. it on the other side, or yeah, you can do that. So super modular interior. It's even they've even got tracks on the roof. Again, we got the Baja Designs lights. That's the touch over. light, right? No, actually, or, it's all controlled oh, from the Red Vision. All from the Red Vision. If you'll be able to see it, but so like you got the canopy light here. Take your canopy lights on and off. Yeah. We got the reverse lights. We've got a set of rock lights. Of course, during the day they're hard to see. Um, We've got the, uh, I don't even know what that's for. Oh, it's for inside the truck. And then, you know, of course, you got down here uh, auxiliary 12 volt stereo. I don't even know what that is. And then the 110, that's actually turn the inverter on and off. So full control of everything. And it's actually on, you know, a mob armor mount because you're down to mob, so am I. And I so, yeah, so that basically comes up. Got the mob armor max there. And that just allows me to kind of take it off if I need to, like, you know, disconnect this, replace it. I'm not unbolting anything. I just on and off. And the mob armor stuff is great because it's really it holds your stuff. I mean, yeah. that's pretty heavy. That's a, that's a steel backing plate, and you know you can run down the trail and that thing will just stay stay planted. So it's really yeah. really nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd say down. I say mob armor is down to mob for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need to collab actually. Right. Down to mob armor. <laughs> there you go, right? right. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, that pretty much sums up the canopy part but there's just a little more on the interior. Do you guys want to see the interior? I think we should, those PRP seats. Ooh. Oh yeah, PRP seats, right. Yeah. Well, we'll move over there and check that out and then and then you guys probably got to go, you know, have a break or something because I've been talking for about an hour. Yeah, we'll check in with some other people, but I got to say, I think this is my favorite super custom build here. Yeah, it's, it's like the most, as far as like, I don't know. The big trucks are cool. The earth roamers, all this and that. But I like stuff that's fun to drive. Yeah. I haven't driven this. I think this would be very fun to drive. You know what? I think a follow-up <laughs> video might be in. we got to meet up somewhere and we get this thing, you know, back on the road after the show. I like where your head's at. Yeah, we might need to let this. Uh, when you get, your, get your Jeep going. Yeah, we might need to let the LS eat. They like eating. Yeah, they do like to eat. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's check out the interior and get excited about that. <laughs> Okay, so inside the, uh, inside the cockpit here, inside the cab, um, again, like I mentioned, we've got this second uh, Red Vision screen. So that controls everything that's controllable through the canopy. 
but it gives you the ability to do it from the, from the driver or passenger seat, which can be handy. You know, you want, you're driving down the road, you want to check your, your voltages on the battery, how much solar you're getting or how the battery's charging, or maybe you want to turn the rock lights on and off and that kind of thing. That's all done here. And again, uh, with the Red Vision system, you can, you can daisy chain, I don't, I don't know how many, I think it's infinite, a number of these screens together and run it back to the Red Vision. So that's kind of handy. Um, we've got a nice little waterproof uh, USB plug here. These are kind of cool. Plug in your USBs there, and then they're trap the cords get trapped, so you don't have to worry about the <laughs> USBs falling out when you're when you're on the road. And uh, I'm fiddling around too much with that. There we go. And I got my little Bluetooth audio here. That's kind of a nice feature to have, like right right at your fingertips. Um, got our ARB compressor, rear locker, and front locker switches. And all that stuff can be run through like a Switch Pro or through the Red Vision, but I'm kind of old school. I like my analog switches when it comes to things like air lockers and stuff, because you want to know they're, you want to know they're engaged for sure. Like you turn that guy on, you want to know that the uh, compressor came on. You want to know for sure your your locker's gone on. And you, these analog switches just give me a little bit more confidence there. Um, we stuck with the stock uh, transfer case. This is just the H2FA uh, Toyota Land Cruiser transfer case, but we did re-gear this with uh, with some Sumu gears from uh, from Sumu out of Australia, I believe, and that gives us a lower range than stock. Um, and then, given that we're running the uh, the uh, reverse manual valve body transmission from TCI, we needed a shifter that would allow us to you know hammer through the gears easily. So, this uh, Art Car shifter from uh, Winners uh, is something that you see maybe in like uh, trophy trucks or or maybe uh, King of the Hammers trucks. So there's really no frills. It's 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 got very little uh, to do with uh, there's very little electronics. It's it's very manual. You can you can pack dirt into this thing. It'll still shift. So we wanted that kind of low maintenance uh, simplicity inside the cab. You know, because we'll be driving on dirty roads with the windows down. Um, even though we do have AC, it's inevitable. You're going to get dirt inside these vehicles from time to time. So you know, for me, you know, I'm pushing 50. I want a comfortable seat for those long trips down to Baja or up in the mountains in Washington, Pacific Northwest, down to see Phil, wherever the hell he is. You know, uh, seats I've come to find as, as you, you know, as the years pass on, especially when you got all this horsepower and braking and whatnot, you want to be held in there nice and tight. So PRP makes some amazing seats. Um, these are actually their uh, recliners, their Enduro recliners. So um, they're a little bit fancier than a, than a standard race seat. So it's kind of more for your daily driver. But I rock these in my fourth gen forerunner and love them. Uh, they do allow you to do all this custom stitching. And it's, it's amazing how many custom options you can do with these. But uh, these guys in particular have uh, water in a water pack in the back. So you got a like kind of like a camelback still. So when you're driving, you get thirsty, you can drink your margaritas from here. I mean, <laughs> water, whatever. And then uh, you got your seat heaters built in. On the front, you got these cool. Could you hold my mic there? Oh, yeah. So you got these cool goggle pockets so you can put stuff in there you know Neat. goggles or your wallet or you know i don't know whatever stir sticks and then um and then i've got these i've got these these are basically four point harnesses with a standard seat belt buckle now this is not a race kind of a deal this is more again like a daily driver slash convenience i want to be, be held into my seat because things are going to get gnarly you know again if you're going to get a full race back harness you'd have your fifth point going through the legs here and all that, but this is plenty good for um, for what we're going to be doing with the truck. And then just for added safety, we did um, add this uh, oh, kind of a rear hoop bar. There, yeah. You know, so I, I pulled the seat forward. Of course, it's kind of trapped by the seat belts, but we got a harness bar because I always want to make sure if you're running these types of uh, four-point harnesses that you don't run the back uh, part of the harness down to the floor directly because in an accident you'll just crush your spine so you gotta need a harness bar at about a 10 degree angle from the top of the seat which we kind of got here and then the main hoop back there kind of replaces what would be the C pillar so we got your A pillar B pillar and then because I just cut all the sheet metal out of the old truck there was really no C pillar so I added that for extra security and just rigidity of the body mm -hmm. um, uh, eventually, we'll have a dog seat back here. Uh, so as you can sort of see, the interior is not finished. No headliner yet. There's some missing stuff. But um, once this thing's all done, 
Um, there will be a full dog bed there for our dog tracker because he travels everywhere with us. So it'll kind of come up in this area. We did something similar on the Baja Runner. We pulled out that middle because it was a single cab truck. And uh, he loves just sitting right in there. And he's kind of like a little goober. He loves that stuff. Um, you know, other than that, inside the what used to be the doors, there's actually storage compartment. So my, my twin compressor is in here. And on the other side, there'll be a radio, uh, bay for radios at some point once we get that installed. So the doors allow you a nice, a nice, you know, unused space for putting stuff. And in our case, we got compressor and then future electronics on the other side. So, you know, Very other than cool. that, uh, oh, uh, we didn't talk about the roof. Oh, yeah, the front runner rack, yeah, right? Front yeah, front runner rack or the custom snorkel. Yeah, we got to check that. Oh, custom snorkel, that's yeah, sweet. Snorkel. These seats, too. I've been looking at these Enduros, um, and I really like what you've done with the hybrid. You know, we don't, as overland, doing overlanding, we don't need five-point harnesses. Right. Um, but it'd be nice to have a seat that holds you in a little more. And, and, you know, these, wow, this is sweet. I've, I've seen the Enduro seats online before, but. They, they, um, are, they are as comfortable as they are good looking. I'll tell you, man, like these things, like the old, the old Toyota seats in our 4Runner, they're built for a wide variety of people. So they're like kind of like a big bench, you know. And every time we take a corner or get off camber, you know, my wife would be sliding out the door. I'd be sliding that way. Dog would be sliding that way. So, you know, when we found out PRP made the recliner, we're like, oh, we're all in. And, you know. Dang. They're just, you know, the suede here just locks you in. And I, I need some. I need some in the yeah. Mobicon. Yeah, you got to go for I've it. I've actually played with the custom colors online. Oh, it's so good. So much fun. So you can even give them different material that they don't even offer, and they'll put it in there. I did not know Like, that. you can get crocodile skin, whatever. Really? Yeah. Nice. They also make all sorts of, like, little molly straps and window guards if you're into the racing thing, too. Yeah. So, so if anybody's out there, they want a really good seat for their Overland rig, check out prp man you won't be disappointed Heck i can yeah. say yeah um but why don't we just wrap it up we'll, we'll yeah. do the roof and then and then i can get out of your hair you guys can go do something else sweet this has been great though man let's check out the roof so phil do you have a roof rack on your jeep i don't yet we're going to be developing a pack racks roof rack cool. um, but i'm excited to see see this one and, and what you've done up here with the front runner stuff yeah so so uh, we approached front runner about getting a rack for the 80 and then they make one for the full the full size 80, but nothing with this short of a roof line. So the nice thing about the front runner stuff is it, it is kind of like that modular, you know, extrusion tubing. So I have my techs take this, do some measurements and basically chop the full size rack down to this little mini rack here. But it just works out real nice. Uh, it's basically right in line with the headache rack. So um, from the from the body line standpoint, it really holds true to the whole design and flow of the truck. And then it gives you a nice point for putting your dirty max tracks and a couple of uh, storage boxes. And those happen to be the, the new, uh, ext I don't know, extreme box. I'm going to get this wrong and Frontrunner's going to kill me. But that's their new storage box up there. It's got some really cool, um, you know, uh, metal handles and latches and stuff on there. And, uh, you know, at our shop in, in, up in Isqual and in Tualatin, we sell the heck out of those front runner uh, wolf pack and cup packs. And then when they came out with these storage boxes, which are like super waterproof, um, we really were keen to get a set on this truck and, and they were they were kind enough to supply us with yeah. with the two up there so so yeah it gives us that little bit of extra stuff stuff you're not going to need maybe it's spare parts maybe it's uh you know medical supplies i don't know you know stuff like that where you're not going to need it all the time but mm -hmm. you but you want it but you don't want it cluttering up your your main living environment so mm -hmm. uh, roof racks are great for that yeah, and you want access to it, and like the Max Tracks, you know, if you were stuck, your truck would be lower. It'd literally be easy to get to them. Yeah. They can get all muddy. The mud can stay outside. You can just chuck them right back on the roof. Yeah. yeah, it's a great spot for the Max Tracks on the roof rack, yeah. and they're not heavy. Right. You know, they're one of the lighter things considering the space they take up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And, the, and the roof rack itself is pretty lightweight uh -huh. and, and, you know, gutter mounted, and they offer a couple of different sizes and stuff like that. But anyway, but that sums up our little truck here. I don't know. It's, we call it the mule mule wagon or the or the Ute, you know, chucker in the Ute, right? So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's yeah. so custom, and you can really tell that you've put your own touch on it. And it's been it's been a build. That it's like you said, it's your build. It's it, it seems very personal to you and, and what you've wanted, yeah. which is cool because a lot of companies it's easy to just slap parts on and sure. and say just just this is a show truck. This is for display. Right. No, I can tell you've got passion in this, and this is like your baby right now. It sure is. It sure is. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I got I to gotta really have a shout-out to all the, all the different vendors who supplied us or helped us with the build. Um, you know, 
guys, if, if you get a chance, check out Power Break out of South Africa. They're just coming on the scene, but you know, it's one of the things I think that as overlanders, overloaders a lot of time we're called, we always kind of go, yeah, we need more horsepower, I need that supercharged, I need that. But stopping is really key. Trust me, man, when you're going down a mountain pass, Baja Runner, and your brakes, you start to fade because you've gone too long with your foot on the brake pedal, mm -hmm. you start to appreciate things like good brakes. Mm -hmm. So that, and then of course, Mitt's Alloy coming on scene, I think, I think folks are really going to start to appreciate the, the, the tray and canopy setups that they've been rocking over there for decades. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know, I'll stop yeah. talking. And uh, No, that's a good point you say about brakes, though, and mountain passes. I just ran Imogene Pass, and, you know, being so exposed, the LS3 is super fun. It's never going to save your life, though, and good right. brakes could potentially save your life if Absolutely. versus not having the braking power you need and, and being in the wrong scenario. It's, it could be scary. Yeah. So take a break and stop. Wait, stop and check stop out the scenes. Be down to mob, but also stop and right. chill. Right. Yeah, so you can mob, but you got to stop. Yeah. Once in a while. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Joe, this was awesome talking to you. Last yeah. time we chatted was a couple years ago, and, and I was up in Washington at your shop. Yeah. And so it's fun to see you here in my kind of home base area, Arizona. Yeah, man. Uh, like I said, Phil, it's always a pleasure to bump into you. It's been a while, and, and thanks for taking the time to check out our build. It's, uh, it's truly nice to... Uh, to have you, you know, have you come out and just you know, appreciate what we've done. So put a lot of hard work into it, and uh, you know, it's cool to get it, uh, yeah. get it out there. But anyway, thanks, man. Thank you, man. It's appreciate been it. super inspiring for me to see it, and uh, yeah, we'll see you around the show. We'll go see what else. Maybe we might stop the, by the Dometic booth next. I know they're over here. Yeah, but so we'll the, go chat with Larry or something. Forget, we're gonna go mob. Oh, we're gonna go mob. I'll hold you to it. Yeah. All right. We'll All right. see you, man. Thanks. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Jason, Swell Runner. Jason, how's it going? Good yeah. to meet you finally. I've done this. I've done this. Oh, dude, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even consider it that no. way, man. You're killing it. Well, no, I mean, I just have, like haven't posted much in the last year and a half. Well, I've noticed that. <laughs> but you guys have done uh, great. I still watch your stuff. Thanks, man. Yeah. 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 It's How been. You guys, doing? you guys having a good expo? Yeah, it's been a blast. Nice. Um, I'm in the off the grid booth. It was super last minute, but I'm stoked to have the Jeep here so people can see it. And do you have a camper on the back or is it a flatbed? What did I say? Not yet. Uh, the yeah, the Bison camper is a couple months out. That's right. You're doing the Bison. Yeah. Okay. And that's been like everyone's like, where's the camper? Where's the camper? Yeah. Um, and I'm so excited about it. It's like. Those, I think, look really, really awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about it's. I feel like they've really are the only company who's taken kind of what's in my head, and they're they're going to build it. You know, everyone I think it's else a great is. Way, great, great way to go. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to do a flatbed. I just I can't I can't do it. It's just too much money. I'm just I got to think that I spend my money on these days right now. But <laughs> we have so many kids at home. But uh, right. The flatbed. You've got the Ram work. now, right? Yeah, I've got the, the big old yeah, yeah 40 inch. Yep. With the rooftop tent? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I've got the eye camper on there. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly convinced on going. Have you seen the new eye cab full size? The new, was it the Kaya or the? It's the Canopy, but they've renamed it the Cabin. It's the same as the Canopy. Have you seen that? No, I need to go it? see it's that. It's just been unveiled, like today. Oh, wow. Well, it's, I got to see it. It's pretty killer. Awesome, man. I mean, you're familiar with the Canopy. Camper, of course, right? of course, yeah. So it's 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 cozy inside. Yeah, right? very cool. I mean, it's fine for a small size. Uh, for a small size truck, but on the full size truck, you want more room. And the cabin camper, it's capacious. Ah, capacious. <laughs> yes, the capacity, having space. It's Sorry. the coveted, the best thing about the yeah. camper is the hanging out. I think that's the route I'm going to go. So that's, that's cool, right. man. Yep. That's way cool. Well, great to meet you, Jason. Great to meet you. Yeah, well. Swell Runner, check him out. Woo! This is like super organic over yeah. here. <laughs> He's like, keep it going, keep it going. Yeah. yeah. But no, fun meeting you, man. And yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. I hope your, I'm excited to see your next thing. Phil. Phil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes we get. I don't always say it, Jason, so yeah. it keep people, you know, yeah, I give keep them on their toes. Yeah. Like, Mr. Flower, I'm yeah. Like, My name's Jason. <laughs> awesome, Phil, man. Great to meet you, great to meet you yeah, too. We'll Thanks guys. for saying.